These days you can find all sorts of websites on the internet. Amongst those are also websites that nobody should ever lay eyes upon. One of these websites that is especially popular with the extreme crowd is called The Other Side. This website can't be found with a regular search engine. The link can only be found on a select few websites of the same nature, and to get in, you must also know the password. But what type of website is this mysterious Other Side? One person who visited it reported the following. Hello and welcome to Toshiden, exploring Japanese urban legends. I'm your host, Tara A. Devlin, and on this show we'll be looking at different urban legends from Japan, how they came about, and when possible, the truth behind them. Have you picked up your copy of Toshiden Volume 3 yet? It's available on Amazon right now, so head over and grab it. This week, we're looking at the urban legend of the Bizarre Website, which is believed to have sprung to life, like many other modern urban legends, on Ni Channel. But before we dive into the history and origins of the tale, let's look at the rest of it. What did someone who supposedly visited this website have to say? Let's take a look. I've visited numerous grotesque websites over the years, but this website was plain white with nothing but the words, the other side, written on it. As I was looking at it, suddenly a message appeared. Would you like to come over here? Of course, I chose yes. Then I was shown a variety of extreme images and videos that I'd never seen the likes of before. Most people would turn away at that point, averting their eyes from the nightmarish images on screen. But I became ensnared by the other side. And the reason for that was because there were even more images. Would you like to come even further inside? It asked me. Of course, I clicked yes again. I was shown even more extreme and violent images, and so... I told one of my friends who liked the same sort of things about the website. He soon fell into its trap as well. We proceeded even further into the other side. As I fell further and further into the abyss, I came across something titled Pseudo. It seemed to be a live feed of a room somewhere, and inside that room was a grotesque creature that resembled a human fetus. This pseudo-human was being held captive in that room, and every now and then a man would appear to feed it, clean the room, and take out his anger on it, torturing the creature. I was glued to the forbidden scene before me, and I watched the pseudo-room numerous times. But one time, I managed to catch what the masked man was saying, and I realised what dialect he was speaking in. Then, I was pulled back to reality. This is taking place for real, in Japan, right now. Growing fearful, I stopped visiting the other side, and I told my friend he should stop as well. But he was completely absorbed in it, and couldn't stop. On the contrary, he called me a fool for no longer wanting to see it. We became estranged after that, but then one day, I suddenly wanted to know how he was doing, so I called him. I couldn't get through, and he had apparently moved house as well. None of our mutual friends could get in contact with him, and I still don't know where he is, even now. Thus ends the private record of the other side. There are rumours, however, that this website is actually run by the government. They say it was designed to catch deviants, allowing the government to uncover and arrest them before crimes are even committed. As you proceed further into the other side, viewers are ranked according to what they choose to see, and the government then decides how to deal with them based on those rankings. At any rate, should you happen across this website, you shouldn't go too far in. If you see too much, then you might be taken to the other side as well. 
So there have long been rumours of hidden websites that can only be accessed through special means and hidden behind a password so only those who know somebody else that's already in can enter. And to this day, people claim that, yes, they are real. They claim that if you head into the dark web, you can find all sorts of live feeds where you can pay money to watch or even give instructions to a person in a room who will torture another living being according to your desires. You can find all sorts of violent and extreme videos and images, the likes of which you would never find on the regular internet. Whatever you need to satisfy your cruel, morbid desires, you can find it somewhere on the internet. And even then, there will always be something even more over the top than that. But how true is this one? There have been rumours of websites like these in the West for almost as long as the internet has been commonplace. But where did this particular Japanese legend, the legend of the other side, come from? As I stated earlier, this one seems to have sprung to life on Japan's favourite anonymous posting ground, Ni Channel. On March 15th, 2003, an anonymous user shared a post that is near word for word the urban legend as it's known today, with a few minor differences. While the major details remain the same, the Ni Channel post ends with rankings that detail how bad a person viewing the website is considered to be. This part seems to have been lost from the legend over time, perhaps because they were too lengthy or added little to the overall story. The post claimed that A, the person who wrote their account of The Other Side was given a ranking of 5 by the police. Everyone who visited the site was ranked on a scale from 0 to 10, with 0 being the worst of the worst, and 10 being someone who found the website but never went any further. Those ranked 10 to 4 were apparently left alone by the authorities, but that changed once you moved to three and up. Three would get you on a warning list. Two would have you placed under surveillance. And one would have you involuntarily hospitalized. But what about zero? There was apparently no record of what happened to those who attained the rank of zero. But unlike the legend as it's known today, a claimed that not only was he unable to get in contact with his friend in the end, but that all traces of his existence were seemingly erased. It was as though he never existed at all. And perhaps that is what happens if you manage to rank high enough. As with many other urban legends of this nature, the moral of the story is to be careful what you look at on the internet. If you feel the urge to sate your darkest desires with the anarchy only the anonymous nature of the web can offer, beware. It might not be as anonymous as you think. The government may still be watching, and in fact may be the very ones baiting you, testing you, pushing you to see how far you go before they make their move and remove you from society altogether. There is, of course, no evidence that this website exists or has ever existed. It's a little much to assume the government is setting up grotesque websites in the hopes of catching potential criminals before they even commit a crime. It sure does make for a great creepypasta to share anonymously on the internet, though. And that brings us to the end of this week's episode. You can help support us and get early access to both this show and Kowabana over on our Patreon at patreon.com slash Tara A. Devlin. And if you want even more urban legends, Toshiden Volume 3 is available on Amazon right now, so don't miss out. Thanks guys, and I'll see you again next time for even more Toshiden, exploring Japanese urban legends. Want even more scary stories? Head over to koobana.net for new translations every week. You can also join our Patreon for exclusive stories you won't find anywhere else. Head over to koobana.net now.